For over a month I've been living with the RTX 4070 Super. And honestly, it's a great piece of technology. So much so that I'm literally mad with Nvidia, because I have the results of pretty much the whole lineup of RTX 4000 series in my hands. I compare it. It is insane. On paper, the new model differs from the old one, with a more powerful chip. In practice, that's exactly the case. Games show a 15-17% to better performance. Where there were already a lot of FPS, there will be a lot plus 15%. Where the regular 4070 fell slightly short, the super version will do the job. And these aren't just words. Finally, you can play Cyberpunk properly at QHD with past tracing. Just turn on DLSS to quality setting and get on average of 51 FPS, the best result of all the measurements I've done. It even outperformed the laptop 4090. But it doesn't count, cause the CPU from MSI Titan was heavily bottlenecking due to the power limit. Never mind. To achieve the same frame rates with the regular 4070, you have to put some effort. Apply overclocking, drop a couple of settings down a notch, minor tweaks. But there's still a difference. Switching off past tracing down to the old version of RT, there's even a possibility to play in 4K with some stretch. And this graph will explain why. The 3070 Super confidently surpasses the 3080, laying in territory where even the 3090 could stand. Objectively, 39 FPS isn't that much. Someone might switch to a balanced DLSS preset, getting around 45 FPS, which is better. And someone might try DLSS 3, where AI interpolates frames between existing ones. Then you get on average of 60 FPS, and throughout the entire run I didn't notice any major issues in terms of graphical artifacts or input lag. Interesting. A year ago I was playing God of War. On a QHD monitor my RTX 2070 was averaging 45 FPS. I have to overclock it and overall it was fun to play. The 4070 Super doesn't output just 45 FPS, but 105 FPS! Once again surpassing the 3080. Even in 4K at maximum settings this new card literally eats all games for breakfast. I wouldn't be surprised to see a mini PC build with the 4070 Super to be placed next to the TV instead of PS5 or Xbox. The whole GPU consumes around 220 watts, reasonable numbers for modern compact systems. I once reviewed the ASUS AP201 and this novelty fits in there with a whistle. The only thing to remember is how you feed it with electricity. Because the regular 4070 uses standard 8-pin connectors. A sensible solution for a card with about 200 watts of power draw. But for the Super, Nvidia for some reason slept on a cool, not cool, 12 pin connector. Even though the difference between the cards is only 20 to 30 watts. It's stupid, but worth remembering during the PC build. You must either use an ugly adapter or get a power supply with the native PCI Express 5 connector. That one, not to be confused with that. All tests were done with the Core i7-14700K. Twone cores, no power limits, DDR5, liquid cooling, a solid platform to let the GPUs work to their full potential. Is it? Because in Spider-Man the CPU might be lacking. At least the GPU load indicator often drops to 90-93%. On the Super this happens more often, meaning the graphics may not be fully utilized. But there is an impression that the load indicator is just broken in this game. Because if there is a CPU problem in both cases, the results shouldn't be differ much. And here there is a clear difference. The story is roughly the same with ray tracing. The indicator tells us about underutilization, and with the super it is more pronounced. On average the run showed 93 FPS. With a faster CPU you can expect something like 97. Not a huge difference, but just the fact. Even for the latest generation i7, it might be challenging. In QHD. In 4K it's clear, the Super provides a noticeable boost. You can feel the difference between 48 and 55 FPS. For comfortable couch gaming, the new model doesn't necessarily require sacrificing graphics quality. On the other hand, native 4K starts to struggle with 0.1% lows. Sometimes the game feels a bit jerky. Plus or minus, it's a general issue for Spider-Man, and with DLSS most of the problem seems to disappear. But I'll take note of it. 
There were also freezers in Call of Duty Warzone, appearing and disappearing depending on the position of Mars relative to Venus. And what weather is in Cape Town tomorrow? Random freezers, in short. So here are the results, treat them with a grain of skepticism. I blame the Core i7, mostly due to its hybrid architecture. And Baldur's Gate 3 constantly struggled with the processor. QHD – bottleneck. 4K with DLSS – bottleneck. Only native 4K resolution at maximum settings somewhat differentiated 4070s. Less than I thought. Usually the gap is wider. A bit further into the video, test will be shown in the background, without commentary. The overall picture is clear, this is a very good GPU for QHD resolution. With rare exceptions, you'll get either excellent FPS, enough so that for the foreseeable future you simply won't have to worry about whether the GPU can handle smooth gameplay at maximum settings. It can. Or you'll be bottlenecked by the CPU, even if you use the latest generation Core i7. With older games you can even aim for 4K resolution, and not everyone realizes how confidently you can aim, because from the outside it looks like I'm trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. How can a mid-range graphics handle 4K? Let's play a guessing game together. Trust me, it will be interesting. I'll set all the games to maximum settings. On the left will always be the 4070 Super. And on the right a mystery GPU may have a different resolution and ray tracing setting. Your task is to guess the model on the right. And the bonus point is for guessing the resolution. Let's go. The quiz opens with God of War, with 4070 scoring a solid victory. However, the secret opponent isn't backing down. You'll get 60 FPS if you will play on an RTX 3060 in Full HD. It's still a decent GPU, actively purchased. So actively, in fact, that now it is the most popular GPU on Steam chart. Well, okay, it's already 3 years old. So let's add the 4060, also in Full HD. And it's catching up for 4070 Super, which is running in 4K. But in Cyberpunk the situation isn't so bad. In both cases DLSS is enabled at quality setting. The new GPU falls behind the 4060 in Full HD with regular RT. A solid result if you don't know that the 4070 Super was in QHD with past tracing. In the third round I'll make fair conditions. The graphics settings are completely identical. You just need to guess which GPU is losing in Plague Tail Requiem almost twice over. On the left is the 4070 and on the right is also a 4070. The laptop version was 140 watts TGP. Nvidia found enough people willing to call these two products by the same name with different tags. One is super, the other is laptop. And the control shot to the head, the RTX 4060 Ti, the ultimate GPU for Full HD. Lost in that same Full HD in almost every test, even though the 70 Super was in QHD. The guessing game yields two clear messages. Firstly, the 4070 Super is indeed a powerful GPU. You can think of it as an RTX 3080 Ti without any extra issues. Reasonable heat dissipation, reasonable memory heating, slight FPS drop when ray tracing is enabled, plus the card itself is about 10% more powerful in rasterized gaming. Excellent. Its owner will have no problems playing the most modern games in QHD resolution with good FPS for next couple of years. Unless some unoptimized mess comes around, well, no one is immune to that. In the future, about 3 years from now, 12 gigs of memory will no longer be enough for maximum settings across the board. Usually it's enough, but the most demanding games will exceed it. This happens with the RTX 3070, where 8 gigs were just enough for 3 years. And attentive viewers might have noticed 10 gigs here, 11 gigs here, 12 gigabytes basically full memory buffer in Cyberpunk with past tracing. The limit is closer than it seems. No problem. When memory becomes insufficient, you can lower shadow or texture quality by one step and play without issues. The real question is, is it comfortable to live with the knowledge that for 750 bucks you bought the same amount of memory that people can buy for 320 for 3 years from now? 
Nvidia isn't even hiding the planned obsolescence factor and sees you as a money bag who will buy another GPU when the existing ones is runs out of memory. If you are okay to shell out a bunch of cash for a bunch of FPS and occasionally dial down the graphics a bit in a couple of years, then the 4070 Super is for you. It's power efficient, quiet and cool. The ASUS version from my video with three fans stays within a reasonable range of noise and temperatures, so you can opt for something with just two fans. The only thing is I would look for a computer case that's a bit wider, especially if the power supply in your computer doesn't have the native support for 12-pin high power connector. And you must use the... The thing is, the new connector doesn't like strong bands at the base and when it's not fully plugged in, which can lead to poor contact areas, melting, it's not worth it for that kind of money. A wider case will allow for smoother bending. Or you can just leave the case open, that's also an option. Perhaps the main problem lies in the price. In Ukraine, the 4070 Super is sold for at least 750 bucks. With some effort in the same price range, you can find the RX 7900 XT, a card competing not just the 4070, but 4080, with all the benefits. It has more memory and higher power. I'd rather choose that one. But it seems like more people will choose the 4070. There is a second reason why I showed blind comparisons of graphics cards. Finally, I've completed the cycle of reviews of the main RTX 4000 models and can see the big picture. It's a bullshit. It seems like the 4070 is the lowest tier Nvidia expects you to buy, because cheaper models are much worse in comparison. And now we have the 4070 Super with an even better price to performance ratio. So, without 600 or realistically 750 bucks for a graphics card, you won't get any real innovations. Not many people are willing to spend that much money on GPU. At best, there is the 4060 for $300, an alternative to the 3060, where you get more FPS for less memory. And somehow I can understand that. In the worst case, there is the 4060 Ti, where the real performance increase needs to be examined under a microscope. This happens because there is no competition. The 4060. 4060 Ti and 4070 laptop exist at their prices because they fit into the current market. AMD only strikes at level of RX 6600 or 6750 XT, the cards from previous generation. This is normal for enthusiasts and not quite normal for newcomers. Because I came to buy a new GPU, why are they trying to sell me the old stuff? And among the new generation, the competition is only at 600. To 800 bucks level, right where the 4070s are sitting. Partly why the new supers came around. Apparently, for the 4060 super to appear, AMD needs to push their price with their RX 7600. The company regularly does this, forcing the market to move. For example, when the previous generation 6600 were released, nobody was particularly excited. At those prices, the GPU looked as bad as the others. But over the time the price dropped significantly and now people are almost praying for 6600. Will the same happen with the 7600? I don't know. I would really like to see the 4060 Super. Because right now the situation in mid-range market is grim. Especially when you know that Nvidia could release it. They just don't want to. Thank you for your support, likes and subscribes. My name is Roman. See you in the next videos.